What up y'all, today's gonna be a fun one. We're taking you straight out to the private fishing ranch. Man, we are lucky to have access to this place and some of these banks were hard to hit. We actually took the boat out there and the winds were so crazy, we ended up having this bank fish. And so what we did is we backed up the tailgate into some reeds and we hit some spots that are normally not accessible throughout multiple ponds on this property. Had a lot of fun, fished with Torrance. You guys know him as Pond Boys over on Instagram. He just hit 10K. Devin and I got on some good fish. I missed a lot, I don't know what my deal is, but you're about to see it, man. Let's have a bunch of fun. Take you straight there now. Yeah, all right, we pulled up. We about to tailgate. I think this will work. Oh, I can almost reach it. Oh God. Bam, fishing platform. Double up, we found the right side of the pond. Hey, bud. That's a chunk fish. Look at this dude. Yeah. There we go. Got him. Got him. Look at that. Look at his little mouth. Yeah. He's a teeny little mouth. Yeah, they're fat, though. Big of a body he's got. Check out that chunk. Smacked it on that white chatterbait. Good old, like, solid three pounder. But look how short that fish is. Look at that belly. All right, Weston's got to get on some fish. We got to get in there. You're ready. You gotta get out of the grass, fish. Come on. I'm in the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I think, next cast. Oh my God. Let's go ahead and just uh, All right. truck flip you. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, guys. Next cast. Straight up from the tailgate of the truck into the pond. Just truck flipping them up into the tailgate and getting it done. Let's go. I'm gonna there. throw Devin's tranks. She's got the white. Bloop. All right, y'all, Devin picked off a quick two. Torrance got one or two as well. Quick double up. We're about to head over to another pond on the property. There's so many ponds here. We just want to give a few a shot. There's limited bank access at this one. So let's go ahead and make a move. 100 degrees today. Winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, 100 degrees. That's going to be the hottest day so far this year. Welcome to Texas, y'all. Let's see if this will work. Ugh. Oh, I thought Torrance was on right quick. That was fast. Came over here, figured we'd do the tailgate idea again. And by the time we get to casting, Little three. Shoop. Got some length. There we go. Oh, oh, oh no. don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not do. doing it. We gotta get the pliers. There we go. Good deal. Good old natural colored crack dog. There we go. There we go. We are baking in the fish off the truck right now. <laughs> Let's get them. came off. He came off. I had him. I was right about where it lightens up. There's like a stump or grass going that way. He was right on the edge of it. Oop. Tailgate double up. Tailgate double up. Oh, he's swimming right at us too. He has actually some... Oh, he was pretty big. That was like a three pounder. He was swimming right towards us the whole time. Oh, man. Dang it. Ah. Hey, 
maybe I can catch a small one. <laughs> Jeez. All these bad hook sets. At least I get one. That's a that's a fatty right there too. Dang. Wow. Yeah. I mean he's like a miniature football. Save 30% on your bait and tackle like us guys at Carl's Bait and Tackle. You can get these hammer hooks, you can grab the Guggen baits, you can get the line. It's all there for you guys. Let's get it back in the water. First catch in a minute for me. First land. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was pretty good. Not far off the grass. Oh, and a bite. Oh, God. Oh, it's slack. It's the wind. Ride like the wind, bullseye. Did I go the right way? Yeah. All right, y'all, the tailgate party has been a success so far, but Devin and I are gonna make one more move. We're gonna hit a pond just on the other side of this hill right here, see if we can't secure one last big berth before we end today's video. But uh, holy smokes, the fish have been biting today. It's, a, it's uh, 92 degrees, but the wind is really keeping us a little cool. Let's say it was the opposite and there was no wind today and we were out on the boat, we'd probably be dying of the heat, but right now we're feeling pretty good having to fish on the bank because there's so much wind, and that is today. Let's go fish. Curbside bass pickup. Oh, this is like crystal clear. All right, swim bait time. Come on, big old bullfrog. Wait, where's your FaceTime? Hey, my frog. That's funny. You gonna throw him a top water bait? No, he keeps jumping out of the water. Right? All right, y'all. We stuck it out at the last pond for a minute. We threw the big baits, and uh, Torch was throwing the traditional stuff. No hits though, so it's windy as heck. Okay, man. If you made it this far, congratulations. Let me tell you what. That was some wind noise in this video. Not a whole lot about it you can do on those GoPros, man. It's gonna get you on occasion. So much so that I wasn't even able to give you guys a lot of the tips that I wanted to share with you as I was fishing. I just literally had to cut it all out, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you some uh, fishing in the wind tips here at the end of the video to close this thing out and hopefully provide you with some value the next time you find yourself in conditions like we've fished today. So here's what I have for you. First of all, your settings on your reel, the rod and line type you might wanna use, and a couple bait choices that are gonna really help when it's windy. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's first start with your bait caster. You're probably worried about casting into the wind or just in general when it's very windy about getting bird's nest backlashes, it's gonna happen. But you can minimize that risk by first maxing your brakes. Every time you switch a bait with the weight, things are gonna change. Casting into or against the wind, it does not matter. You wanna max out those brakes. Next is gonna be your tension. You really wanna tighten that up until your bait barely drops if it's very windy. You know, you can get it pretty loose when it's not windy and you can even loosen it as you start casting and realizing, okay, I'm getting some all right distance, but at first I recommend tightening everything up, start casting into the wind. Let's say nothing else changes but the real settings. I want you to then loosen the brakes up slowly and see at what point is the breaking point. When can I cast into the wind and get the most distance while not getting a bird's nest? That is right where you wanna be with the brakes. Same with the tension. You might just loosen that off, back off just a little bit. Find the settings that are right for you on the reel first. When it comes to the line, something that's lighter is gonna get uh, more distance easily. It's not as thick, so what's gonna happen is you'll be able to cast those lures further, even if it's the same weight lure or bait. So think 10 pound, 12 pound, something along those lines. If you're using 15, 17, 20 on up the scale, it's gonna be harder to cast in the wind specifically. Now, let's go over to the rods. If you're talking about using a little flimsy rod, it's gonna be tough to cast. Something medium, something light. Uh, if you're using spinning gear, this is not a problem. We're using casting gear in today's video, so that's gonna be the focus. So now, if you're using uh, something under seven feet, that's fine, you're gonna have to make do, but I do recommend something like a 7.2, medium heavy, 7.6, just something with a little bit more backbone, something with maybe that uh, faster tip. You're gonna really be able to get better distance when casting into the wind, so if you have a beefier rod, you might choose that one when it's windy. Now, as far as baits go, a spinner bait is probably gonna be most folks' number one choice when it's windy. I've got a couple different color options here, rigged up a couple different ways. This is a Shadden Chartreuse right here with an ice white Zoom Salty Super Fluke on the back. You've got the Colorado and Willow Blades. This is just an all white or shad spinner bait. This one has no trailer. We'll get you guys to see that in better detail here. 
And then we have a, uh, a bluegill pattern. This probably would have been good to throw in that pond that we were fishing as well. They were hitting the natural colors. They were also hitting shad. There probably is no right or wrong if you're gonna fish that specific pond, but I would throw these catered to what is in your waters that the bass are eating, shad, bluegill. One of the reasons these are so great to throw in the wind is because there's so much action and light being dispersed. Now what happens is when it's windy, there's less visibility for the fish and for you. So what's going to happen is all those blades, that light is going to reflect off the surface. Those bass are going to be able to see it and more of that chop and they're going to come in for the kill. And these move a little bit slower. They don't sink super fast. So it's just all that light passing by them real slow. Can't resist, man. The reason I wasn't throwing these to start with is because I had started with a uh, a saucy swimmer, this soft plastic right here by Guggen Bates, and I just had a flash bang, so I had sort of an underspin is what they would call it, and it has a little blade on it, and so I didn't feel like I needed to make the switch, but I bet if I did, I would have gotten more bites. Now what we found pretty quickly is they were actually hitting baits on the bottom pretty well. So that kind of goes against the whole spinnerbait thing. These spinnerbaits are just a fantastic option when it's windy. First bait, I would choose a little bit of weight to them. You can cast that better than a lighter weighted bait. So there's that. But they were hitting the bottom baits primarily. So I was throwing a chatterbait for a minute and they would hit it as it was falling or maybe as it had hit the bottom. So I switched over to a Texas rig pretty quick. How you can maximize fishing a Texas rig in the wind is using a heavier weight. So maybe go to a 3 8 ounce instead of a quarter or your eighth or whatever you typically use. And so that can make a difference. Now one thing with the bottom baits, it's gonna be very tricky. You saw me miss some fish, here's exactly what happened. With those high winds guys, my line is not straight to the bait. There's more slack created from the wind and so my line is very essentially loose. You can still feel bites, just not as well, but you have to really make sure you keep your line tight by reeling in that slack consistently as the wind is pushing it. So what had happened is there's more slack in my line. I feel a bite, I crank down a little bit, I go to set the hook, but since there's so much slack, I'm really not getting much force, much driving force to really set that hook into the fish's lip. So half the time I might yank that hook and might barely even make contact with the fish at the end of the line because there's so much slack caused from the wind. So the bottom baits are just gonna be a little bit trickier to fish and those high wind conditions and what makes those spinner baits seem even more favorable. So I just wanted to include a few last minute tips for you guys when it comes to windy conditions, how you can help maximize your results. And I hope it helped, man. We'll catch you on tomorrow's video. See you then. Ooh.